Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game So here we're continuing the series, The Unported Playlist, where I take a look at some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time, and today we're going to be playing California Speed. I know what you're thinking, this was ported in Nintendo 64, and that is true, but it's such an inferior version of the game compared to the arcade original, I consider this the only way to play. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But California Speed is one of my favorite arcade racing games of all time, and that is because it plays like a combination of San Francisco Rush and Cruise in USA, which should be no surprise because this was co-developed by Atari and Midway, the developers of San Francisco Rush and Cruise in USA, in that order. This is basically a less intense San Francisco Rush or a slightly weirder cruise in USA, and that 100% works as far as an arcade racing game is concerned. The handling, the physics, everything in this game are spot on if you want to play an arcade racing game. No, the cars do not handle anything like they would in real life, but that doesn't matter because it's an arcade racer. But there's a reason I chose the Silicon Valley race course first, and that is to show you just how big of a sense of humor this game actually has. A lot of the time you're going to be racing on places that you would never race in real life, including inside of a computer for what I would only imagine this to be. You're going to see resistors, transistors, different LEDs. You're even going to see an entire 3D effect CPU in the board itself that you're going to race underneath. Ship definitely wouldn't work in real life, it'd have a big hole through it but in the game it works. When I first saw this in arcades I absolutely fell in love and when I got it on the Nintendo 64 I quite did enjoy it, but even back then I knew it wasn't as good as the arcade original and that still stands to be true today. This is just your classic 10 out of 10 arcade racing game where all you need to do is hit the gas and turn the wheel. This game comes with a break, I've never used it before and I don't think I'm ever going to. So much so that on pretty much all of my arcade racing boards that I have in my closet, I don't even wire the brake up. It's full gas, send it, take the turn and hope for the best. As we move on to the next stage here, what I really love about California Speed in general is outside of a few courses, they are not laps. It is a start to finish race. You start in one spot and you run to the end. There's so much to do, so much to see, and so much absolute chaos going on at the same time. You can't help but love this game. Like what other games are going to allow you to ride into a mall, start running people over, and using different parts of the geometry as ramps? Well actually that's not quite true. I don't know who inspired who, but Code Wood Dispatch from Konami also lets you drive through a mall, running over aliens in this instance, and taking out entire walkways. Driving through a mall was a big thing, and I'm sure it's all down to the Blues Brothers movie that set the tone for car chases in a mall, and California Speed definitely takes that cue and runs with it. And that's why I love this game so much. From the mid-90s to the early 2000s, we just got these over-the-top arcade racing games that we no longer really see anymore. Sure, we get arcade-style racers like Forza Horizon, but I feel like those don't give me the same sensation of speed and just over-the-top weirdness that something like California Speed would, pun very much intended. I just want to rip through a mile, I want to run over sprites, and I want to finish a race, although again, I took second place, it can be quite difficult to get the first place finish in this game. Now the developers at Atari and Midway give you an absolutely massive selection of cars to pick from, and I love how each race course starts. You pick your car, you pick your transmission, and this tunnel in real time loads into the next race. It is very seamless and it's a really fun thing not to just see a loading screen. It's a small touch and a completely unnecessary one, but you can tell the developers absolutely loved making this game because they put small touches everywhere. And a lot of courses are going to have branching paths, they're not as big as something like San Francisco Rush. If you're looking for the giant jumps and loops and everything else like that, you're you're not going to get as much of it in California Speed. What you are going to get is an amazing start to finish racing game that I think is better than any of the cruising games. Mary San Francisco Rush together with Cruising USA, out comes California Speed. It takes the best of both properties and makes its own game, and I do think this is one of the best arcade racing games of all time. But tell me down below in the comments what your favorite arcade racer is. I'm sure I'm going to hear a lot of Segas, and I would say that Outrun 2 is definitely my favorite of all time as well. But the soundtrack to this game is fun as well. It's not the best soundtrack ever put to an arcade racing game, but it works in context of the over-the-top nature and speed of this, so go ahead and listen and I'll be right back.
It's a generic hard rock soundtrack, but in California Speed, it just does work as it drives the intensity forward because there's always something new to see. And I love that this just deals with the state of California. San Francisco Rush had a city, Cruise in USA had a country, California Speed has a state. And as we go through this movie back lot here, the game has a really good sense of charm. There's always great scenery to look at. It always works contextually within the course that you're running on. And this game has an absolute metric crap ton of different race courses. But for this next race, I'm going to do it start to finish, pole to pole, so you can better understand just how the courses in this game are set up. Because one of the things that makes this game so spun and special in my opinion is the fact that each individual course outside of just a few is an end-to-end -end run. Where you start is not where you're going to finish, and the course design is spectacular. There's shortcuts, you can drop in and out of bridges, you can take branching pathways. There's always a different way to go, and learning that clean racing line is 100% where the fun is. You'll see here as we get into downtown, it's definitely going to narrow out and we're going to have to make some sharper corners. But if you just let off the gas a little bit, throw that wheel to the side and hit the gas, you're going to get a little bit of a drift and it's going to work for you. And of course, it wouldn't be San Francisco without some air. Definitely not going to be jumping over Lombard Street like you do in San Francisco Rush, but it still works here in the context of California speed. But of course, this game is pure spectacle. So we're not driving over the Golden Gate Bridge, we're driving on top of the Golden Gate Bridge. Cars down below, we take this little road off to the side. When I first saw this in arcades back in the day as a kid, I fell in love with the over-the-top nature. I love arcade racing games like this, the San Francisco Rushes, the California Speeds of the world, because they are so unrealistic. It's like a kid's fantasy of what driving a car would really be like until they get their license at 16 and realize this is not the type of stuff you should be doing in a car, or in the instance of the San Francisco Bridge, something you even could do in a car. But that's why a game like this is so much fun. It is pure arcade racing fantasy. It's something you can never do in real life. And in the game, it just works. We went from driving over the Golden Gate Bridge to now we're underneath a train tunnel, avoiding oncoming trains at the same time. The minute you've seen something, the game's going to show you something new to deal with. You're going to have to jump over something or navigate around it. It's just so much fun and the sense of satisfaction when you have a good race and your reaction times are there and you're able to get to the finish line in a good position, it just makes you smile when you're playing and that's all we could ask for. And of course, it's a midway game. You're going to get girls in bikinis. It's just how it worked back then. As we move on to another course, there's so much different diversity in the racing courses. You have beginner, intermediate, and advanced. The advanced courses are going to be switchback roads. They're going to be winding, and it's going to make you take everything the game has taught you and learn since you played it and make you a better driver. You have to understand the physics engine in this game. If you're good at San Francisco Rush, you're going to be good at California Speed. If you're not, it's going to take you a minute to understand it. But once you get keyed into it, once you learn it, you're going to love it. But one more taste of the soundtrack, it's got a really good one in this course, and I'll be back and tell you a little bit more history of the game, but enjoy because it's good. Really, I gave you another sound sample so you could hear the sound effect of the bald eagle screaming in the background, but I was able to get first place. It was my one and only first place finish of this capture. If you are curious, I am playing this via MAME. It emulates perfectly fine. I am looking for an original arcade board, but they're not the easiest thing to find, so hopefully by the time this video goes live, I'll be able to leave a comment down below saying I found it. It's now in my collection. But obviously as we move on, now we're just driving on a roller coaster. Not every single course in California Speed is going to be this fantastical. A few courses in the game are modeled after real life raceways, and it's not as fun as driving on a roller coaster. I'm not saying those courses are bad, but when I play California Speed, I'm here for things like this. Now if you do want to play the Nintendo 64 version, the good thing is it's a competent port, and it does have some exclusive tracks that are not in the arcade game. But the arcade game has some tracks that aren't in the Nintendo 64 port either, so if you want the entire California Speed experience, you need to play both games to get all of the different courses. It's unfortunate that this game never saw a sequel because just like San Francisco Rush, I absolutely loved it and it's 
a series that I think could be revamped. We haven't had a San Francisco Rush game since LA Rush and that was absolute trash. We haven't had a good cruising game in a long time. We never got a sequel to California Speed and I would love to see what the developers would do with this formula today. All I really want is more arcade racing games that are like I remember them in the 90s and 2000s. I mean, we're in the middle of Mount Shasta right here. We're going through an active volcano. We just get to drive around. We have helicopters going over the top. It's bright. It's colorful. It's cheery. There's always something new to see. It is just over the top, unlifelike racing. There's an RV just flipping in the air that we're able to drive under. And that seems totally normal in the world of California Speed. I just love arcade racing games in this genre. I know a lot of you do too because these videos are always well viewed. But again, tell me down below, did you remember playing California Speed back in the day? Do you play it now? Do you have it on the Nintendo 64? I would be curious how many people have played this because unlike Cruising USA and San Francisco Rush, this definitely is not as well remembered, which is unfortunate because I think this game is every bit as good as them. And for Cruising USA, I think this game is definitely better. But I just love this game. It's so much fun. And if you want to play it, definitely play the arcade version while the Nintendo 64 port is good. It is in no way, shape, or form the same game that we played in arcades. This one's just better. Short of that, we're done. The checkered flag is here, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.